Hey everybody, this is PD here in Myrtle Beach, and I just thought I'd stop by tonight uh, and share some thoughts with you uh, that are on my heart. Uh, for those of you who know me uh, best, you know that one of my biggest passions is the overall um, health of pastors uh, and their families. So. For a few moments, I'd just like to touch a little bit on what I truly believe is the most significant heart cry of pastors of this time that we live in now. The things that burden pastors' hearts, I believe, uh, have an impact on their health. So I like to give solutions to the things that I know will make a, a, a happier person in that pulpit, okay? Uh, so I believe that one of the uh, most significant burdens right now uh, on the pastors of this day is that they are seeking to reach a, a very unique and special generation. And it's causing them a lot of distress because they just can't seem to do it. They don't know how to achieve this. You know, and there's many formulas out there right now by self-proclaimed church growth experts and uh, YouTube consultants, YouTube gurus. You know, but my motto really is keep it simple, saints. Have you ever heard that KISS uh, acronym? Uh, and so coming from that mindset, simplicity, uh, I believe that the solution can be simple too. It does not have to be complex. It does not have to be complicated. What I do believe is the answer and a good starting point is that pastors need to be speaking the gospel with authority. Uh, from a, from a, not only that, but they need to be doing it from a humble and a transparent personality, the attitude of kindness. So I want to encourage you pastors tonight to strive with all of your might to be what this generation needs, guys and ladies. You know, change is hard. I get it. I totally get it. But it's worth it. There are so many that are desperate, desperate, to know God right now. But they don't want to know him the way that you came to know him or the way that I came to know him or the way that my parents came to know him or the way my grandparents came to know him. So, you know, I say pastors and, and, and teachers and uh, Christian leaders and, uh, you know, Christians in general, really, Let's be relative to this culture because there's one thing that does remain the same in every generation, and that's God's Word. God's Word says that He desires none to perish. None. Last time I checked, none equals zero. You know, we may not meet that quota of none or zero every person achieved. I, in fact, I know we won't need it because we've already failed it. But we need to get to work on as many as we can right now. So, you know, and I say pastors, but really, like I alluded to just now, all Christians, all Christians are involved in this. All Christians are teachers. And why, why? Why are all Christian teachers? Because Jesus said so. He said it in his great commission where he commanded us to go into all the world and do what? Make disciples. What is a person who makes disciples? To make a disciple, you have to be teaching them something, right? What is a disciple? It's a student. So if you're making a disciple, then you are teaching somebody something. Christianity, guys, is all about changing lives, transforming hearts. That requires teaching. 
Now, I know you could argue that and say, no, only the Holy Spirit changes hearts. But the Holy Spirit works through us and through the words that we speak to people. And, and yes, he lays conviction on hearts. But a large part of that is discipleship. Okay, it's teaching. And what does Romans 12, 2 says? It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind. That is a teachable action. So it also says, then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. It's an action statement. It's a, it's a cause and effect. It's a teaching and a learning and an action. Okay, so I say teach with authority, but don't forget to be humble. And, and people will listen to you if you do this. If you put this combination together, they will listen to you in this generation. And really in any generation, the baby boomers, the Gen X, the Gen Z, the millennials, the generations to come, the, gener the silent generation, if there's any of them alive still, there is, I know, because I work with them. Uh, you know, they will listen to you. Okay. But you know what? I think these millennials <laughs> that we're so desperately trying to reach, they really are just, they're smarter than us. And I think that's why we have such a difficulty working with them, uh, because they really are smart. They got this being real and this being true to themselves and, and to the world around them down to an art, guys. They, 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 they don't care about putting on a show. They don't care about uh, smoke screens. They don't care about uh, manipulating emotions. They don't care about uh, um, all that, that, the glitter and the glam. You know, they care about purpose. They care about results. And they, they don't have room for the big egos and the ulterior motives. And that's not to say that none of them you know, exhibit those traits, but I'm saying overall as a generation uh, norm, they're all about measurable results, okay? Uh, that's their main guidepost. And they just want to, they, they, they want to be a part of it. They, they, they want to be a part of the positive change in their world. They want to see that change and then they want to be involved in it. And they're willing to be a part of it. They want to. If we just put something of value on the table. So I ask you, pastors, teachers, leaders, every Christian, how are you presenting the gospel to an anticipating and vigilant generation? Are you reaching them? If not, maybe it's time to adjust your attitude. Hey, guys, as always, uh, take care of yourselves and others, and uh, we love you.